Okay, this is a uh, brief, hopefully, video to uh, demonstrate how to use my um, yearbook and uh, pitching status sheets for those interested. Um, any of these can be converted over uh, to any season, um, but I utilize RetroSheet to get the information for a lot of this stuff. So if you want a particular season, you got to let me know and we need to put a retro sheet together and show you how to run that routine. But uh, basically, you go into whichever folder you uh, have these in and uh, some season I have links and some season I don't. Uh, 1980 I have links. So if I open up pitching status first, it's going to... Uh, ask me for links. Of course, it's not going to do that now, right? Let's uh, try that one more time. Every other time, I there we go. And if you hit update and it's in the right uh, location, it'll take care of that. Actually, I think my uh, links come to uh, the teams for the pinch hitters. I know the links came when I added in the uh, the uh, pinch hitting routines. So I'll look somewhere online to try and get rid of them. But uh, for the time being, um, it's easiest to open up the yearbook, and once you have that saved, you well uh, shouldn't have to worry about that anymore. Um, gotta have mac macros. Don't worry about the pitching status. That was an old routine I used. Um, basically, this is where you can look for your next game. This is where I actually keep track of where I'm at. Uh, say Atlanta wins, I'll go in there and I'll give them a yellow highlight, so forth and so forth. Um, each game day, I always go in when I start out and I box it off. Just go in there and get a thin border and box off all the games for that day. Just kind of keeps things organized. And um, if the rest of the Rick sheet, uh, these team sheets are old. I think they're just retro sheet, uh, not retro sheet, uh, baseball reference uh, data for the players. Um, at one point I used that, but I don't anymore. All those can be deleted. Um, schedule tab I just went over with you. This here's the percentage of the way through the season you are, and this is the game number of the season. The date, and the one right here is one for the most part. Every once in a while you'll see there's a double, tab, double header, you'll have one and twos. Uh, some of my schedules, uh, when they're available, have uh, night or day. In next instance, I have uh, all the uh, games sorted not only by date in an alphabetical order, but night ga night games come after the day games, so that they can all be played in uh, realistic order. As you can see, you get to the end of the season that you're 100% uh, done the uh, season. Never got that far with inside pitch. I got into uh, I believe it was August, and I found my Stats are really, uh, in the beginning of the season, I messed up a lot of the uh, transactions and stuff, and I used pitchers that weren't supposed to be used, and I guess the obsessive compulsive in me wouldn't allow that, so that uh, season got scrapped. So we're starting again with uh, Dugout Steps, which has become my favorite uh, baseball game. Um, even though I tend to forget things a lot and got to revisit the rules quite not a lot, but uh, some of the some of the lesser used uh, instances I got to revisit the rules for here and there. Okay, um, transaction date. Um, you can get rid of all these. Um, same thing. When you uh, this is all the transactions for a given day. You see, I have all the opening day rosters for each team on here. So you can go through and get your cards set based on the opening day rosters. All this comes from uh, uh, Baseball for Windows, um, their manager, the download page. 
and then uh, the daily transactions and I do the same thing for each day I'll go in and I'll kind of box them off and uh, cards I use on my desktop I uh, move the cards from the active part of the pile to the inactive part of the pile and in in my uh, games I uh, have my inactives face the back of the bag and my actives face the front and uh, stadium cards separate so it kind of keeps things easy and organized just by the way I do it. I also have some sorted transaction by team. Um, that really only comes in uh, to play when uh, I'm setting up a, a pitcher status sheet for the first time. Because uh, as, as you'll see when I go to that sheet there, the uh, transactions and starting and all that is very important to uh, having your pinch hitters and relief pitchers. Uh, selected properly so that's another thing you know another tool there and the last one is transaction player and uh, that also comes into play on my pitching status I use this one actually more than the team player team player I mean transaction team I think mostly I use that if I lose a uh, lose my place in the season it's easy to go back in and just go through your uh, transactions by team to get everything caught back up. So there are the tools for you. That's the uh, yearbook, pretty cut and dry, very easy. And we'll open up the old uh, pitching status here. Yep, oh, still asking for it. Update the links, it'll get you there. If not, you can manually update them to wherever you put the uh, yearbook. And if I find out where they are, I'll get rid of them and send you a new file. Okay, this one here, I'm going to open it up full screen, but normally when I play my game, I leave it right here, because you don't need to see anything else. In this, um, if you ever have to restart, just change this number to, you'll see I have a schedule back here on the LUF page. You'll, you'll go up here, and you'll see which... Uh, line the, the uh, current game you want to play is on and um, that's uh, I think that's the one I use how easily confused we can be yeah I think I pick up up off of there anyway yes yeah, see I have night and days here I don't know how I didn't sort them originally yeah, getting off base again. So you can be sorted um, by night and day for your schedule. So you play night and days uh, in order. Um, pretty far along in the season. Probably too late to do that. But uh, it, it's there to be done if you want to. Anyway, this will tell you, um, say, here's the date. Here's the inning. If you want to bring somebody in in the eighth inning. Um, you just click the eighth inning, and don't worry about that number right there. That uh, is a guide for where to look up numbers in my spreadsheets. Um, and if you hit inning, it'll automatically s select uh, the pitchers available at random for each team in the eighth inning. And that's based off of realistic uh, appearances and how many of their appearances they uh they uh, had in that uh, inning slot. And you see, uh, eighth inning, uh, Rick Camp was used a lot. That's uh, uh, Larry Bradford was used a lot. So their names have come up a lot. Um, Al Herboski, not as much. Uh, Preston Hanna, rare. Boggs, rare. But they'll show up once in a while. And the pitcher you've already used uh, shows up. Just hit the inning again till you get them in there. Um, sometimes if there's a sage situation and uh, and there's only really a clear-cut uh, closer for a team or the, the guy chosen doesn't have a uh, save for the season, I'll re-roll a couple of times just to give it a chance to get somebody in there that should really get a save. There are very rare occurrences where there will not be any 
numbers in these slots, they will give you an error. So if you get an error, um, revisit your, your team grids and make sure that you have one pitcher available somewhere. Uh, delete a start or X or something just to give yourself a picture and you can always manually override it too I mean just ignore it for that segment put a picture in there and go to town doesn't have to be perfect it's just a tool uh, kind of make things easier for you I know my tendency would be overuse good pictures and don't use bad pictures and uh, you sometimes need something in there to force you to use the ones you don't uh, necessarily want to use same thing for um, pinch hitters, um, versus left, versus right. Um, that would be the uh, Braves pinch hitter versus a righty. That would be the Braves pinch hitter versus a lefty. And you just hit the pitch button, pinch hit button to, to change them. And you see they're not always the same. And they are based on their... Um, actual appearances versus lefties and righties and now comes the fun part um, on the teams um, for those of you who are getting this um, I haven't gone through and gotten rid of my um, data that has uh, been accumulating uh, in my replay so it, it kind of gives you an idea how I track usage and um, how you probably want to do it on your own. Um, this is a standard starter setup right there. Uh, one day of uh, rest before start, the start, two days of rest after a start. Um, I'm flexible about that second day off after a start in a rare uh, extra inning game. Um, you can put them in there for an inning or two. Just delete that X if you have to. Um, when you're opening your season for the first time, go through and delete all these ones, point ones. That's how many innings they appeared. As you'll see, anything over an inning, I usually force them the rest the next day. Um, I also, uh, if they appear three games in a row, I'll, I'll X out the next game. Again, if you're running out of pitchers, um, let them come on in and X out the next game. Um, eventually, it'll it'll work out. But go through and delete all them out. Careful not to delete the starter information. And as you can see, um, I've gone through and charted all the inactive periods for the pitchers and the players. And yes, that took some took some time. The starts are all done by S and I have a, a nice little macro back here in my um, uh, worksheet that does that automatically for me. I select the team and uh, I'll run LUF and off it goes. Um, I don't see my this may be one where I didn't do that. Uh, this may not be the LUF anymore. Pinch hit, select, pinch hit. Yeah. Normally on my, uh, like my 2008 manure when I have two buttons. So you can go through and do your pitcher starts and your, your um, uh, position player starts. I don't know where that went. I think maybe I overrode it. Anyway, regardless, um, that's all based on the, ah, oh, there it is. I gave an extra sheet on this one. There's, there's pitchers, here's pinch hitters. It's all based on the uh, starting data for the um, teams through the year. And all that takes about five seconds. You put the LUFs in from the uh, baseball manager transactions and uh, let the macro, as long as the names match, you let the macro do its thing. Normally from uh, retro sheet, or not retro sheet, uh, baseball reference, you'll get the names in, in uh, Brian, like you say Brian Asselstein instead of Asselstein comma Brian. 
Um, I have a way around that. Um, you just, the, the names have to match for those macros to work. So uh, we can go over that if you uh, ever want to redo a season. I can walk through that. But being as you're, if you're doing A80, you, know, you don't have to do anything to change this. Um, say you're done this game, you want to go to the next one, you just hit next game. It'll automatically load the next two teams in the schedule. Your date will be there. It'll revert back to the fifth inning, and you're ready to go. Um, and this is the only screen you really need to do anything on other than the housekeeping after the game. And you do want to go through each team, get rid of my um, usage and rest. You have to care for the leave the starting information in there and the uh, trade and minor league uh, information. And there will be nothing down here. So you don't have to worry about the pinch hitters. Pinch hitters, oh, I'm showing things around, are based on their appearances versus right hand pinches, uh, right hand pitchers, and left hand pitchers. And I've dug all that out of retro sheet. And uh, for pitchers, they're rated less than fifth inning appearances, five and six inning. 7th inning, 8th inning, ninth inning, and then 10th inning, inning and above. So, uh, and that's all based on real life appearances in those slots. And uh, as long as there's not a letter in here, they'll have a numerical rating that'll show up on the first page. So, if they're not active or you have them resting, they're not going to show up. Um, so, it makes it nice. You don't have to think twice. Um, you're not going to use a guy that wasn't available. You know, well, one of those things that I screwed up before and I've done everything possible to make sure I don't do it again. So that's it. Those two. Um, CGC, I already have a video up and um, actually a couple of videos on how to set them up. And if you have questions, I'll be happy to answer them and uh, just shoot me an email. And... Uh, can they make a, another informative uh, video if I have to. Um, dugout steps helper. Make sure you put your ballparks in when you're copying them. In this format right there. Um, your ones from Jeremy and the team in the, uh, the uh, ballpark sheet will copy into this zone right here. Make sure that you got commas between the uh, foul territory numbers. My my macros need that. And the other thing is is these numbers here, uh, because of the multiple numbers for some stadiums, need to be done right here for each of these grids. Um, so, um, trying to think of a stadium right off the top of my head that has one that I could show you on the team sheet. But that's important for uh, home runs, to, I mean fly ball to home run routines. Okay. Oh, don't want to go there yet. Uh, this is your pitcher batter impact number or interaction number, depending on how you want to call it. This is the pitch count. This impact number will uh, read the proper zone in the batter's card and the pitcher's card and it will add in the current pitch count to give you the uh, batter pitcher impact number and I have all kinds of other goodies in here to show and don't show as they come up um, I've done a video to try and point them out I've um, also done a few games uh, pardon the rules I forget but the uh, they um, are fairly accurate, and uh, the for the most part, the the uh, CGC is too. I'm redoing these routines, and uh, I've still got a little work to do in. Um, I think it's the out the hits, but uh, anything that doesn't look right, you do the do the work manually. It still saves you a lot of time. Um, 
lineup position, you just click right here to cycle through the lineups. It'll, it'll just rotate around in circles. You don't have to do anything there. And uh, let's go see if I can find a ballpark that has a. I know 1927 will have. Let's go to 1927. 1927 will have one. We'll go to uh, teams. And a good old New York Giants should definitely have one. And that will be, yes, Polo Grounds. As you see, there are several of them. This is the good one to show you on. Um, left field has a three and a slash. Um, that anything in the the uh, brackets will be applied to the gray zones down here. So you'll see I have a zero three three for left field. Zero three three. Then in center field, thirteen nineteen. That deep center field, the Willie Mays portion, and. Um, the uh, the uh, right center and 13 19 13 to correspond with that again the, the gray area gets the 19 and the same thing over here 3 3 and then 0 in the gray area very important to have those uh, numbers like that and then when you save your team sheet just save it like that and this is what I set up a team sheet like this is the season that I uh, play uh, on PC so you'll see I have my inactives over here my actives over here so I just select these here uh, select these here so when I copy paste into my uh, my uh, CGC I don't have to do anything just open up the page control C go into the other one select control V loaded done deal all right so that's all I got. Uh, I'll uh, finish up here. And if you got questions, let me know.